As of the time I'm making this video, over 5,000 planets have been found outside the solar system, of nearly every type imaginable. But just a few decades ago, we only knew of a handful of exoplanets. These first exoplanets are all unique from one another, some well studied, some not, and some eventually turned out to be things far stranger than planets. What are the first planets we discovered outside the solar system like? The first planet we'll go to is Gamma Cephei AB, a planet 45 light years away from Earth that's officially named Tadmor. Despite being discovered in 2002, almost 10 years after the first exoplanets, the first evidence for it was discovered in 1988. This makes it, technically, the first exoplanet to have evidence for its existence that wasn't refuted, though it was confirmed much later. Tadmor orbits an orange subgiant star called Eri. Eri is about 20% bigger than the Sun in mass, but has left the main sequence phase and begun expanding into a red giant, and so is currently four times bigger than the Sun in radius. Eri is also a variable star, meaning its brightness drastically changes, getting far brighter or dimmer than usual at certain times. Tadmor orbits about 2 AU away from Eri, double the distance from Earth to the Sun, and is about nine times bigger than Jupiter in size, classifying it as a super Jovian planet. But that's not all the system has to offer. 15 AU away from Eri is the second star, named Gamma Cephei b, which is a small red dwarf in orbit around Eri. This means that Tadmor is in a binary star system, with two stars instead of one. So far, no other planets other than Tadmor are known to exist in the Gamma Cephei system, but it remains interesting nonetheless. Eri is reaching the end of its life and becoming a red giant, but there are stars out there that have already gone through this entire cycle and died, leaving stellar remnants behind. One of these objects, Lich, is home to the first true exoplanets ever discovered. Lich is a pulsar, a type of fast-spinning neutron star that forms when a large star explodes as a supernova. In 1992, two planets, both around four times the size of Earth, were discovered around the pulsar, marking the first time humanity confirmed the existence of planets outside the solar system. The two planets were later named Poltergeist and Phobotor, with a third smaller planet, Draugr, being discovered a few years later. Poltergeist and Phobotor orbit Lich closer than Mercury orbits the Sun, and Draugr is even closer. But despite this, the planets are likely very cold due to the low luminosity of their pulsar. Almost nothing is known about the Lich system due to its huge distance, over 2,000 light years away from Earth, and the difficulty that comes with studying pulsar planets. I already have a separate video about pulsar planets, link in the description, but despite almost 30 years of opportunity to study these worlds, almost nothing is known about them other than their mass and distance from their star. It's unknown if Poltergeist and Phobotor are rocky or mini Neptunes, or if they have atmospheres or not. Hopefully we'll know more about these pulsar planets in the near future. The next planet we'll go to is 51 Pegasi b, which has been officially named Domitium, the first exoplanet confirmed to exist around a star that wasn't a pulsar. It's about 50 light years away from Earth and orbits a star similar to the Sun called Helvidios. Domitium is about half the mass of Jupiter, but unlike our gas giants, it orbits Helvidios far closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. This makes Domitium extremely hot, and so was the first confirmation of a planet type called a hot Jupiter, which I also have a video about in the description. But despite Domitium being only half the mass of Jupiter, it's bigger than Jupiter in radius. This is because hot temperatures of Domitium make its atmosphere expand, puffing up to a bigger radius than planets of its size should usually be. Domitium is also hot enough to glow red, and could have clouds made of vaporized silicates in its atmosphere, similar to more modern exoplanets like the more massive HD 189733b. Domitium is one of the more well-studied hot Jupiters, and so we know more about it than many other planets like it. But before Domitium, Poltergeist, and Phobotor, there was another planet candidate called HD 114762b, the last stop for this video. HD 114762b orbits a massive F-type star in the later stages of its life on a mildly eccentric orbit similar to Mercury's. When it was first discovered, it had an estimated mass between 11 and 63 times that of Jupiter. This made it most likely a brown dwarf and not a planet, but if the lowest mass estimate was correct, that would make this object the first exoplanet discovered, before Poltergeist and Phobotor. However, it turned out that HD 114762b was bigger than everyone thought. The planet had a high mass uncertainty because we didn't know how inclined its orbit was. Depending on what angle we were looking at the planet from, the mass would change. This is because the method used to detect it, radial velocity, relies on seeing the light of a star as it's pulled by the planet's gravity. If the star was being pulled in a different direction or angle than we thought, it could throw off the mass measurements of the planet. This is what happened with HD 114762b, as the true inclination of its orbit was discovered, giving it a mass of 107 times that of Jupiter. This mass makes it a star, not a planet. Surprisingly, this is only one of the many objects that were once thought to be planets but ended up being stars.
But HD 114762B is unique because at one point, it was thought to be the first exoplanet ever discovered, until it was confirmed to be a star. So, those are a few of the first exoplanets ever discovered. But despite knowing of their existence for decades, we know next to nothing about any of these worlds. There's still so much left to discover, from Tadmor to Poltergeist and Phobator to Domidium and the thousands of other exoplanets we know of. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets, as well as my Colonization of the Solar System series.